Hi! Welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, and today I'm getting into some great dystopian recommendations. So if you guys don't know, I am a huge dystopian reader. Um, I like any sort of weird dystopia, um, often set in other countries or written as English not first language, and there is some really creepy, surreal, dystopian stuff out there. Today I'm going to talk about over a dozen books which I think that you guys might find interesting and that you may not have heard of before. So I know that obviously The Testaments, which is the follow-up to The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, is coming out very, very soon, in just a few days. So that is why I am posting this video. I think that there is no better time to get up a dystopian recommendations video than with the arrival of the Testaments, which I will absolutely be reading, and I'm very, very excited. Starting off, we have a, some different categories, and the first one I want to talk about is books which are similar to The Handmaid's Tale in that they deal with reproduction rights and also kind of enclaves that are hidden off from other parts of the world. So the first one that I would be remiss not to mention is The Core of the Sun by Johanna Sinisalo. So this actually follows the Usistocratic Republic of Finland, um, which has changed their entire government. In this world, women are split into one of two categories, Eloi, who are sexual and submissive, and they are used for procreation, essentially whereas the other type of women are deemed as not viable and are sterilized and are not useful to society and they take on menial labor. Um, in this world we are following Vanna whose younger sister has gone missing and she is trying to save her and find out what has happened. Another element of this very already dystopian and kind of handmade tale story is that there is a certain type of drug made of chili peppers which has been getting people addicted all around the Republic. So this is quite a bizarre story. I think that it's really unique, and if that sounds at all interesting to you, go ahead and check it out. This was very cool. Another dystopian dealing with reproductive rights is The Chrysalids by John Wyndham. Now this is kind of a classic and quite old. This copy, <laughs> I don't, we don't make covers like this anymore. It's absolutely amazing. Um, this is set in a world where reproductive success is at about 50%, which means that the people who can have children are very much kept really, really safe. However, our main character is a certain type of person that can speak to others in their mind, and in this society, any deviation from the norm is rooted out and killed from the gene pool. So it's very dangerous to be other in this world. So this is another one where I thought it would be quite interesting if you like a bit of older kind of science fiction. Um, and the ending to this is quite, I think, controversial. Not my favorite ending, but definitely a very cool world. Another one which deals kind of with reproductive rights again is The Wanting Seed by Anthony Burgess. Um, I quite enjoyed this when I read it. It was very interesting, and I haven't read anything like it since. This is set in a dystopian world where we are dealing with overpopulation, and so the government decides homosexuality and gay rights is seen as the ideal form of marriage, an ideal form of sexuality and partnership. And if you are straight in this world and you have a baby, it's considered very disrespectful for the environment. So it was just a really interesting take on it, and it gave me a lot of food for thought. And I've never heard anyone talk about this before, so I just wanted to mention it. And the last one I want to talk about in this category is Ink by Alice Broadway. This one is dealing with a closed-off society which views everyone else as canvases or white because they don't have any tattoos on them, because in this society, when important life events happen to you, it's inked upon your skin, so you are a living canvas of your life, so that when you die, the skin is taken off your body and made into a skin book, which your family then can keep and, you know, look back over the ages and see the memories that you have as a person, and all of your descendants keep all of the skin books. It sounds very macabre, and it totally is, but you get over that in the first, I don't know, a couple chapters, and then it's just about dealing with revelations that the main character makes as she goes deeper into the society and the ritual of the inking. So I thought that was really cool, and I really love any sort of books that 
have like kind of a culty vibe plus tattoos that's like really awesome to me okay so the next set of dystopian um, is following off of I would say like my other favorite dystopians which I'm sure you know so I'm not going to explain uh, they are 1984, this is my copy, this is my husband's copy, as well as Fahrenheit 451 by Ray Bradbury. These are very important and well-known dystopians that I'm not going to get into with you because I'm sure that you already know what they're about. Instead, I'm going to recommend you books which I think um, follow along the same vein. So it's political unrest, political upheaval, and the government really trying to crack down on the citizens. So one that you may not have heard of is We by Yevgeny Zimatin, and this is a Russian writer. This is very similar, in my opinion, to the writing style of George Orwell in 1984, and we are following the 26th century AD, um, where there is the one state and the benefactor, and we're following a main character who is starting to question the way the things are run in one state. It has very slight divergent vibes, slight, very slight. So if you picture maybe 1984 plus Divergent a bit like that, this would maybe be your cup of tea. And another one which maybe you might not know about is Rant by Chuck Palnick. Now decidedly the dystopian elements in this are pretty light, but I'm going to mention it anyway because this is my favorite Palnick. In this one we are following the life of Buster Rant Casey. And as a child, he is obsessed with animals and he wants them all to bite him so he can become immune to their venom. In adulthood, he is separated into one of the groups of people which are not allowed to leave their house during the daytime. They are relegated to nightlife living. Um, so there's kind of a split society where there's like essentially day people and night people. And the people in the night start this event, which is essentially extreme car racing and car crashing. It's really kind of cool. Um, as well as, like I said, time travel and a few really weird twists. So <laughs> if that sounds like your cup of tea, go for it. I will just put a little asterisk on this. This is a Chuck Palnick, which means that there is dark, there is gore, there is something gross, always. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so the next section of this dystopian Rex is about memory and about language. So the first one that I want to talk about is the Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa. Now, this is one of my most highly anticipated books all year because I just love Yoko Ogawa's writing style. So this is originally Japanese, translated by Steven Snyder, who's like one of the premier Japanese translators to English. Um, and I am not finished with this yet, but I am liking it a lot so far. Um, it is set in a world where when people forget things on an island, it goes out of recollection completely. And then the memory police come and collect all of the items. So for example, if you were going to forget what ribbon is, all of the ribbon on the island would be collected and thrown away and forevermore forgotten by the inhabitants. So in this one, we are following an, a writer who finds out that her editor is one of the people that can remember. Um, and instead of him being at danger of being disappeared himself, she decides to hide him in her house. I'm really intrigued and I really like the play on language and memory. So the next one that I want to talk about along the same lines as language and memory is Amatka by Karen Tidbeck, who is a Swedish author. This one is decidedly weird and creepy and I loved it so, so much. We are following a main character, Vanja, who is from one outpost and when she is sent to work in a distant city. It's very much different than her own. So the new city she works in is very wintry and cold and kind of miserable. And all of the inhabitants have to remember the exact terms for items, otherwise they will dissolve. So the person that Vanja is staying with is named Nina. And as she starts to develop a relationship with Nina, she also starts to unravel what the secret and the kind of glue holding society together in this wintry dystopian city actually is. And it was really good. I really recommend it. And Karen Tidbeck has just an amazing writing style and her imagination is really excellent. So if you have never read Karen Tidbeck, I really do highly recommend Amaka. Okay, and next up I want to talk about the section of dystopia where genetic things are happening and kind of the messed up creatures slash genetic modified experiments are running amok. So obviously I need to recommend Oryx and Crake by Margaret Atwood. If you haven't read this, please do. It's great. 
Um, I personally like the first one the best out of all three, and I think that you only need to read the first one. Personally, I don't wasn't really a fan of the second or third, but the first is like really, really great. So in this world, it is just kind of after a plague has broken out and wiped out pretty much all of humanity, and we're following the last human who is recounting what has occurred and going throughout the landscape and kind of just this such a surreal, crazy, trippy acid dream of like a science experiment and the world gone wrong and like just broken friendships. It is really good and I highly recommend it. If you like Atwood, like definitely read it. And along the same vein as weird experiments running amok in the city, I recommend Born by Jeff Vandermeer. This one is a standalone where we are following kind of a scavenger who goes throughout the city and collects things to help her live. Um, and she brings them back to her abode, which is kind of an underground in the hill situation. And she lives with someone who is a scientist or kind of modifies inventions that she brings back. Um, and the thing that I will mention about this world is that one of the huge inventions which is running amok and destroying the city um, is a giant flying purple bear named Mord. Um, and she often scavenges off the back of Mord as he's flying, which is where we're introduced to the character in the beginning. And it was just really odd, bizarre, and I really liked it. If you really like bizarre weird, then this is for you for sure. So we are in the final part of my recommendations and we have three books left. This is the part of dystopia where not only is it a dystopia, but everything is still on fire and still burning and everything is still a hot mess. So the first one I want to talk about is Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. Um, she is a goddess among sci-fi and this is kind of dystopian speculative fiction in the future. It's set in 2025, which is not that far away, like, wow. Um, and we are following a family who is in a very rich neighborhood where the gates are guarded because the outside rest of the area, the city of Los Angeles, is on fire and burning. Like, it's really bad. Um, and we are following a main character whose name is Lauren. When their very exclusive neighborhood is broken into and her family is destroyed and she is forced to flee on foot to safer ground. Um, now this is very much like running through the streets, chaos, and making kind of that vagrant migrant journey across America with no, no preparation at all. Um, so this is very much what I imagine on the road is like, but I think a little less gruesome. I haven't read on the road. It's down here on my TBR shelf. I am meaning to read it. I just haven't yet read it, but uh, Parable of the Sower is really great. And especially if you like Butler, I recommend it a lot. The penultimate recommendation is The Wolf Road by Beth Lewis. I don't think a lot of people know about this one, but it's one of my favorites and it's stuck with me quite a long time. We are following Elka, who is a young girl who in her childhood, her house catches fire and um, she loses her entire family and she is lost in the woods. And when she is lost, she's calling out for help and she's rescued by a man known as Trapper. And Trapper hunts in the woods and brings back animal pelts, which they trade and skin and meat, which they eat. And that is how she is raised until one day people come looking for Trapper and she learns this huge, huge secret about him and she takes off and he takes off. And this is set in a dystopian Yukon wilderness where there's a lot of atomic fallout and everything is kind of poisoned around. So we're talking radioactive lakes and like huge gigantic wolves and she's just trekking through the wilderness after Trapper trying not to die and also maybe being hunted by a gigantic wolf. It is really good and I really recommend it. If you're into survival books um, set in kind of a dystopia and especially a cold climate, this is my specific favorite out of the bunch. Okay, and it would not be a dystopian recommendations video if I did not mention Withered and Seer, The Duology by TJ Klune. This is hella dark, <laughs> really dark, so um, trigger warnings for mostly everything. Um, but we are following Cavallo who is in this post-apocalyptic dystopian world where basically all of society is destroyed and there are small kind of outposts, like think like fur trading days, um, where they build tiny little timber towns between um, areas. And he 
has a lot of PTSD from the past and he can't live amongst the townspeople. He lives out in an aban abandoned penitentiary, which is run by an AI and his best friend is a dog who he can talk to and yeah, so that's where we start off. And Cavallo is out hunting one day when he shoots a radioactive stag and it goes bolting across the highway. And this is a problem because on the other side of the highway is the land which is the territory of the dead rabbits who are a cannibal gang. Um, and when he goes across the road to get the stag for dinner, chaos, darkness ensues and he may find something that he didn't know he was looking for but that they all need. So it is so good. It was, it's one of my best books of the year so far, but of course it is very dark. So um, if that's not your thing, totally get it, but I highly recommend it and I really, really liked it and it's very dark and it's dystopian. So that finishes up my dystopian recommendations for books that I have read and loved and I hope that they give you you know, some new things that you haven't heard of before. If you're watching my video and you've got any ideas about books you think that I would like, please leave them down below. That would be amazing. I'm always up for recommendations. If you liked this video, please give me the thumbs up or hit the subscribe button. That would be awesome. Um, on this channel, I tend to read dark, queer, or translated books or a combination of the three. Um, that's just my jam. And I will talk to you guys in another video soon. Bye!